One thing I'm learning in life, and I feel like it's in a lot of different areas of my life, is that when you have some big goal or big dream or even just big project that you're working on and it seems really overwhelming and you feel like you're starting from scratch, the first and really only thing you can do is to just break that big goal into small pieces and then just focus on each individual piece and eventually it won't seem as overwhelming because eventually you'll start to make progress by chipping away at it step by step. So week one's goal, as you will see through these workouts, logs was consistency week two was form week three again consistency and form we're starting small we're easing into it we're setting small manageable goals week four I was pushing myself I was adding weight and week five my workouts were getting a little bit longer and I was incorporating other forms of exercise into my week as well which you will see all of that in this video my goal for documenting these workouts is to show you that change takes time it takes effort it takes intention and it takes repetition and it's not easy I definitely struggle there were times where I didn't want to work out. I'm not going to lie. I really do not want to go work out right now. My willpower isn't really wanting to do this today. And I just wanted to show you, you know, that having these small manageable goals can be a really good way to help you implement a new lifestyle habit, whether it's cooking yourself healthy meals, moving your body more, practicing a regular sleep routine, whatever health goal you have. I think it's important to start small and take action, intentional action. And that's kind of what I've done here. So I hope that this video inspires you to do the same whatever kind of workout or health goal you have and whatever approach you decide to use it's really easy to see other people on YouTube and on you know social media doing their fitness routines and it looks like they just naturally know how to get into those routines that they're naturally athletic and talented at yoga and doing all these things they had to start somewhere and I think it can be easy to forget that when you're not seeing them at the starting point so I'm showing you me at the starting point you're gonna see me working out in my pajamas a couple of times like you just got to start somewhere and that's what I'm doing right now. I decided to use an app called Copilot for my workouts. I heard about them from a YouTuber named Michelle Reed. Her married name is Michelle Gutierre, but I think her Instagram is still Michelle Reed. But she's someone who has been really consistent with her fitness for years and she mentioned that she was using Copilot and that is basically a mix of the convenience of at-home workouts with a health coach and with a personal trainer that is customizing the workouts for you. So it's not just an app, it's not just a video and you don't just have to rely on your own willpower to you know follow along and be consistent with it there's a human element and someone who really knows what they're doing to help tailor the workouts to you and help to keep you accountable so my ears definitely perked up when I heard her say that I just closed the door because Nicholas just got home from the gym actually he is very consistent with his workout routine but anyway so I heard her talking about it I looked into it I tried it out for a while and I do feel like it's kind of perfect for anyone who has been interested in having a personal trainer of their own wants that expertise and that accountability but wants a more affordable option. So I gave it a try. I really enjoyed it. And that is what you're going to see me doing throughout the weeks of workouts to come in this video. But before we jump into that, I wanted to let you know that I teamed up with them and they are offering you guys a free trial with your own fitness and health coach with the link that you see on the screen. You can go to go.mycopilot.com slash Nikki Vegan, and that will get you a free trial and your own fitness and health coach. So I wanted to mention that offer before I even get into the workouts. If you're watching me doing it and you're like, hey, I want to do that you can try it for free with this link. So I hope you guys enjoy that offer and let's get started with my 30 days, which is actually five weeks in total of workouts. I'm gonna go do a workout, but I wanted to show you this new big comfy shirt that I got. It matches my leggings. I'll do a cutaway so you can see. But this color is just making me really happy because I recently saw on TikTok that there's this whole thing going around. I think this was a big trend in the 80s and now it's kind of coming back and it's the whole like color theory thing where you get your colors done and you figure out which colors are best on your skin tone. And for me, the colors I'm drawn to are not necessarily the colors that make me look or feel my best. I love all kinds of of like beige and cream and you know oatmeal shades like very muted very soft and I do like to decorate my home in those colors I find those muted soft beigey cream tones to be very comfortable very relaxing very soothing but when I wear them I feel a little bit like I don't look my best and a lot of it is because I don't tend to wear a lot of makeup these days especially if I'm going to do a workout or if I'm running errands or if I'm just hanging around the house I don't have a ton of makeup on and so I feel like I need a little bit of color to enhance 
enhance my skin tone and make me just make me feel a little bit more awake and alive and I think this color palette I cannot figure out what my color palette is I know there's a filter you can use on TikTok. I've watched a couple videos tried to figure out what it is I think I think I'm in autumn, but I also am like a more jewel toned color palette so maybe that's a winter. I honestly, I don't know. If you guys think you know what my color palette is, please let me know. I found this shirt. I put it on. It's gigantic. Maybe not something everyone would want to work out in, but I feel like cute and happy, and vibrant, and all the things that you want to feel when you're going to go do a workout. It's like one of those little tricks that you can do that just helps a little bit, you know? So anyway, I'm going to go do a workout. I'll see you guys after. Week one's workouts were all about consistency and getting into the routine. So we started with short 15 minute workouts three times a week. I did Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and these were body weight exercises. So we started with some simple warm ups like marching in place and shadow boxing, which always makes me feel so silly. I feel ridiculous when I'm doing it, but it's a really effective way to warm up the body because it uses a lot of different muscle groups. Then we did some familiar but still challenging moves like body weight squats, we did calf raises. I did some push-ups, but I did them against the wall, which I'll talk more about why we decided to do it that way a little bit later on in the video. But starting with 15 minute workouts without any equipment was a really great way to ease into starting a new habit. And so far I'm really liking it. At the end of the workouts, you can say like if the workout was too hard, too easy. And so this was like perfect for me where I am. It was challenging, but not so challenging that I didn't want to do it or that I felt like I couldn't keep up. I told her that next week I want to do a little bit more upper body stuff. And there was one move called something lumberjack. It's essentially like a whole body movement where you, you squat and then you swing up and then you swing back down. And it's a warm up, but also a full body workout as well. And you really feel it in your obliques, your arms your quads, your butt, everything. And I really liked those. And so I told her that I really liked those and she said she would incorporate more of those into next week's workout, which is cool. So that's my update for week one. Lovely blank wall for you to look at. There's parts of our apartment that are really nicely decorated and they feel very cozy already. And then there's like entire just walls that have nothing yet because I don't know what to do here yet. I'm gonna do something but I don't know yet and I don't want to rush it. I feel like homes are a lot more cozy and they feel like a home when you sort of slowly build them over time. Plus it's way too expensive to try to decorate everything all at once. So we're doing it gradually, mostly based on need. We kind of decorated the areas that need to be functional first and then we'll slowly do more. But that's just part of the moving process. You have big blank open spaces. Anyway, I also have this shirt in a cream color with the same kind of design on it same size, so comfortable to work out in. If I'm doing like yoga or something where I'm doing a lot of like inverted things or downward dog, I like to wear something a little bit more form fitted because otherwise it like falls down on you as you feel like you're kind of tangled up in it, especially when you're like kind of upside down. But I feel like for body weight exercises, anything I'm doing on a treadmill or if I'm going on a walk or if I'm running, like I actually like having something that's a little bit roomier and I have um, black biker shorts on. I'm gonna go do a workout and I've been using my Apple Watch for the workout and you don't have to have an Apple Watch to use this but I do feel like it makes such a big difference because it tracks your motion all of a sudden I got a real-time correction telling me to slow down and I realized like oh yeah I am kind of flying through this I was doing donkey kicks you know We've all done those motions, right? It's like you kind of think you know how to do it, so you just sort of fly through it. One thing I noticed when I slowed down was that my hips were, instead of being square like this, they were like this. So the leg that was going behind me was kind of at an advantage because my hips were on a diagonal. I slowed down, I corrected my hips, and it made all the difference. So stuff like that is just really, really cool. Week two's workouts were all about form as well and simple moves like the single leg donkey kick. I've done many times before, but I really, really focused on my form, tried to make sure that I was doing each move slowly, properly, completely, and it was really challenging. And one thing I liked about it was that it really took me out of my mind and my day and my work and my schedule and really made me focus just on what I was doing. And it made me feel really present, which is one thing that I really like about exercising. All I'm thinking about is just what I'm doing in that moment. Focusing on my form is a really great way to kind of drop down into the body and really focus on what you're doing. So I found that even 
even though I just started working out, I was already feeling the effects, especially mentally. I really like that Heidi suggested that I hold something when I do some of the moves, like a can of food, a water bottle, or a light dumbbell. I wasn't really adding weight yet at this stage, but there were some moves where I felt like holding onto something a little bit heavy helped me to do the move more properly. I also wore my watch while I was running some errands and got some extra bonus points on this week. Week two's workouts were tailored to some of the feedback that I gave Heidi. So one, she cut my rest times in half because she saw that I was kind of skipping the, the rest. Like I would do, if I had a minute to rest in between, I would do like 20 seconds and then push the button to go to the next exercise. So she asked me if I would want shorter rests and I said that I did. So that was built into the next week's rest recipes. <laughs> workout. You can tell I'm a recipe developer. My brain is always on recipe mode. So we had shorter rest time in between the workouts. We also had more upper body moves and also it incorporated more flexibility at the end of the workouts. We did butterfly stretches. We stretched out the legs really well afterwards because I have very tight hamstrings, which I told her and it felt really good. On this week, I actually went to the gym to do these workouts and I found a room that is kind of off to the side because I wasn't quite confident enough to go out in the main room where everyone else was working out. I wanted to have a little bit of privacy, so I went into one of the side rooms, which was great because they have mirrors there and I was able to really check my form and kind of match what I was doing against what the video was doing on the app because they have these tutorials showing you how to do the moves. And I feel like even though you think you know how to do a calf raise, if you're anything like me, you're probably flying through it. And I actually found that my pacing and my form was a little bit different than the instructional video on my phone. And so I tried to make my movement match the movement on the phone. And I actually found that it was much more effective. So I really focused a lot on form on week two and I definitely felt it afterwards. I was much more sore on week two than I was on week one. But I think it's because I was really properly doing the exercises. And even though again, very short and sweet workouts, very, very, very effective. Would it be a Nikki vegan video if I didn't also incorporate some recipes? I really like having some healthy treats, especially when I'm working out. I like to still treat myself, but I also like knowing that these are nutrient dense foods. For example, these peanut butter stuffed dates that I like to dip in some vegan chocolate taste like candy, but they also are rich in minerals and fiber. I also really like these vegan protein shakes to round out a meal and make it a little bit more filling. I wanted to show you this hairstyle that I've been doing when I go to the gym. Sometimes when I do a workout, I literally, like I said earlier, I just do it in my pajamas. I put zero effort into it. I just go get the workout done and move on with my day. But sometimes, especially if I am going to the gym and I know it's gonna be a busy time, I just feel a little bit more comfortable if I'm a bit more put together. And so this hairstyle is very functional because it gets my hair super slick back and out of my face but it also like looks like I put a bit more effort into it than I did and I feel like it just looks kind of cute. So what I do is I put it really high up on my head, down all of the baby hairs, braid the ponytail. And it's so simple, but it really looks cute, especially with athletic wear, athleisure or workout clothes. It is a very like slick look, I think. And it just makes me feel a bit more put together. My hair is so long. This usually hurts my arms. <laughs> Pull the loops apart so it's a thicker braid. So week one was about consistency, week two was about form. On week three, I started to wanna to incorporate more exercises into my routine rather than just doing Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for 15 minutes. So I started doing longer workouts. Heidi made them to be about 22 to 25 minutes from this point on, but slowly I started to incorporate other types of workouts like stretches on the weekends and also just going on longer walks. Sometimes I'll go on a quick walk 
you know, to break up the work day, just to get some fresh air. And I don't even think of it as an exercise necessarily. It's just more of like a mental thing. I need to get out. I need fresh air. I need to move a little bit. But because my watch kind of tracks my steps and then puts it into the app automatically, I was also seeing how much I was walking, what my heart rate was. I was getting like extra bonus points for it in the app. And so it really is kind of that intersection of where mental health and physical fitness come together because you just, I was doing it for mental health reasons, but I was also realizing like, hey, this kind of counts as like extra workout points. So that's become something that is part of my workout routine as well. We started incorporating some weights. We just did five pound dumbbells for some of the moves that we did in week one and week two. My favorite and the one I noticed the most is when I held a dumbbell when I was doing those lumberjack squats. It really kind of made it to where I felt all of the heat and activity in my side and in my obliques and I just felt like everything was really tight in my core and even though it was the same motion it made a huge difference fun to incorporate the weights not too heavy not too intimidating not too much <laughs> but it was it was challenging in a good way I started to feel myself getting stronger and more comfortable with the moves around week two, but now week four, really, really feeling it. And especially because I've concentrated so much on my form and slowing down and adding the weight, it's really making a difference in how I feel during the workout and how I feel after the workout. So we've been doing a lot of the same moves, but with added weight. And some of the favorites that I have, I love those glute bridge marches. I really like this bear crawl one, which is good for your whole body, but also like your back and your shoulders. And then these pike push-ups. they're really good for the top of your shoulders. They look a little bit silly, but love that. And Heidi also included some stretching, which I really appreciate. I've been doing this workout routine for about five weeks. It started so slow, just 15 minutes, three times a week. And since then, I feel like I've really achieved other goals, like improving my form, adding weight to my workouts, which has been really nice as well. I feel like it makes me focus on the muscle group that I'm moving a little bit more. It also helps me to slow down, which was a big goal of mine in the last couple of weeks. I realized that I go so fast because I think I just kind of want to get the workout done and I rush through it. But the slower I go and the more I focus on form, the more bang for my buck I get, which a lot of you guys are probably like, duh. But I'm not a very patient person and I feel like that's really been highlighted through this workout journey of mine. And it's really helped me to see the importance of slowing down and doing things fully and properly before moving on to the next step. Again, it's that same concept of having some big goal or project or dream and breaking it down into small little pieces it really helps me to make progress. It started with just three workouts a day for 15 minutes and then slowly became 22 to 25 minutes with a little bit of walking on the days in between. Now it's still like 22, 25, 28 minute work workouts three days a week, still Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, walking pretty much every day. And then on the weekends, I have kind of like could do options. Like if I want to do a little bit more, if I want to do some yoga or some stretching, those are options that I can do. If I want to go on a really long walk, I can do that if I feel like it. But I like having a little bit of wiggle room in my workout routine, just like in my meal plan. If you watch the how I meal plan video I posted recently, I think having some blank space in your calendar is always important. That just makes it feel a little bit more fun and not so rigid. So if you've ever struggled with putting together a workout routine, I think sometimes making sure that you ease into it and leave a little bit of wiggle room for yourself, I think that can be really helpful. The last little tidbit I will share with you is to not assume that you can do things differently and it's gonna have the same effect. For example, in the past, I've watched workout videos or even in workout classes, the instructor will do push-ups, have us do push-ups, and I can't do a full body push-up like on my hands and on my toes. I've never been able to do that, but I can in the past when I've practiced do a lot of the push-ups on my knees. So a lot of times if I can't do the full push-up in the class or when watching a video without a trainer, I will just go immediately start doing the push-ups on my knees. And what I learned from Heidi is that that is actually a different group of muscles. And so it's not helping me get to the goal of doing my push-ups on my hands and on my toes. So I'm really glad that I told her that because she now has a plan for me to help me grab gradually build that strength. Instead of doing the push-ups on my knees, what we're doing is actually doing full body push-ups against the wall to start. And then we moved on. That was like a couple of weeks, like week one, week two, just doing them against the wall, but doing the full motion with the full range of movement. 
Then we started doing incline push-ups. So again, we're not on the ground yet. We're gonna get there, but right now we're doing them on a bench. Sometimes I do them against the counter. Sometimes I do them on a bench, but I'm still very much at an incline. I'm not fully parallel with the ground as if I'm doing a regular traditional push-up, but I know that I'm building the strength that I need to eventually be able to achieve that goal. And in the past, I thought I was working towards that by doing the push-ups on my knees, but what was happening was that I was able to do more and more of the push-ups on my knees and still not a full body push-up and I could never figure out why. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it inspired you to get out there, to move your body and whatever your big goals are, break them down into small little pieces and just focus on the first tiny little step in front of you and do that as best you can and then keep moving. That's just been a theme in my whole life, all the different areas of my life recently. I feel like that's been something I've been working on, but this especially has really taught me that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you wanna get a free trial of Copilot, you can click the link in the description box below or go to go.mycopilot.com slash Nikki Vegan. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in a video very soon.